what's up guys? Welcome to the Dope Shot Club. In the next couple minutes, what I'm gonna be doing is creating an HDR panorama. Pretty simple. All right, so I've got Lightroom open. Here's some puppy dogs. And just a second ago, I dumped all the footage right here into a great folder called November Sunset. If you look in here, you've got the Canon RAW files. Should be about 42 items total, which is looking good because I took about, what, eight picks, eight times four is three, four. Yeah, they got, got some picks in there. Um, so what I'm going to do next is change this so I can get rid of all the JPEGs because I won't need those in Lightroom. They were good out in the field because I could see exactly what I was creating, but I won't need them now. And then I'll go through and create a new folder, call it RAWs. All right, that'll make it really easy when we go into Lightroom. So let's pop back into Lightroom, go to the library, go to import, browse my computer, find the RAWs. Game is about to be here. Pop it through the door and import these photos. Bam. All right, the photos are in. The next thing I'm going to do is create a little collection out of them because that'll make things a lot easier to work with. So I'm not working. Boom. Create collection. November. November. Boom. Now whenever I need to, I can just pop back into it. So let's start making these into raw HDR files. So I'm gonna zoom back out. Boom. What's up, Gabe? Everybody say what's up to Gabe. Doing a tutorial. What's up? Doing a tutorial. What's up, guys? All right, so we're back in here. So what I'm basically trying to do is line up where each photo is and create the HDR of them first. And then after that, we'll create the panorama after the pieces. Okay, so this is the first one, boom. It's gonna be pretty simple. You just go into select the three, go to photo merge and then HDR. Boop. Let's see what this pulls up as the auto. I'm gonna take out the auto tone for now because we can just work with the tone later. But it gives you a good idea of how strong the HDR is just for this photo. All right, and then once this starts going, then I'm just gonna go through the rest of the photos and HDR them all up. What I'll do is just speed up the video so you guys don't have to watch. All right, as Gabe goes upstairs to talk to the one and only Tim Johnston, we will now merge the HDR photos into one panorama. So as you hold down the command key, to individually select them. You can tell which ones you worked on because of little icons in the corner. Select them all and then we'll just go through and photo merge those into a panorama. Now if you're on Lightroom CC uh, it deals with raw photos in such a way that you will retain all the data throughout it if I understand correctly. So let's photo merge this into one panorama and see what we've got. All right, it looks like it came out really, really nice. I'm really happy with this. It should be really sick. So next thing you wanna do is uh, pull up your phone and get a Snapchat because you gotta tell your friends that you're working on cool pics. All right, once you got your Snapchat, you can click through and see what the different options would bring, but I think we'll probably end up going with spherical based on my experience. That is taller, so I'm gonna go with cylindrical. You never know. All right, so this is gonna push in together, merge it all, make it look delicious, and then we can jump into changing the exposure and bringing out certain elements of it. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's dive into it. Shabang, shabam, here we are. We've got the final pick. Look at this beauty. All right, cool. So it looks like I missed a little corner in the edge, which is not a big deal. I'll just bring it in there. I like to crop it in first. I feel like it's much easier to work with when you have it all cropped in. But bam, I overshot on the right side, but let's just leave a little bit hanging for now. Yeah, I think that's where the beauty lies. Boom. All right, so HDR moment, boom. HDR moment, boom. Look at all that. So much dynamic range. Incredible. All right, so let's bring up the vibrance a little bit. And so the ground, I think I shot it at a very high white balance. You can see it's a lot more red than anything else. So what I'm gonna do is bring the ground. I really want to create a strong sense of contrast in it. I'm going to bring the ground and make it a little bit more blue and cold along with a little bit more green. 
Let's give it some... Uh, I think already it looks really good. I'd like to put a nice circular vignette on the middle here. Drop a little bit of the clarity. Ooh. But I also want to bring out the highlights because if there's no like tonal range in it, it can be a very flat image. And I think right now it's still pretty flat. Just adding that in brings a lot of brings a lot back to it. There we go. Maybe make it a little more magenta in the middle. Yeah, that's a beauty. I'm gonna bring the entire tone of the image up, bring the exposure. Yeah. There we go. And now you can see there's mountains in the background, which are really sick. Bring this, drop it back down. Put a little mask over these guys. This is always handy. Really, you want to make sure you can't see the mask though. Give them a nice blue color so they pop out. Contrast. Ooh, it's looking saucy. So saucy. Let's go before and after. Nothing. Boom. It's already looking really nice. Really nice. Let's go down and work with the details. So you can see some camera shake in there. See the tiny wiggly lines, the chromatic aberration? That could potentially be camera shake. I should have had it on a two second timer for each shot, but I did not. That's what you get. Let's go over to the mountains over here. Looking dope. I'm gonna reduce the color of the noise. I'm going to add a little bit of vignette on it because vignette just makes everything look sick. What I can also do is work with the individual colors. So right now I'm going to bring out the orange satch. I feel like the clouds are a little bit dark, so I'm gonna paint them in a little bit. And bring them up. Give them a little clarity action in there. looking saucy all right from here I'm gonna go into export and since it's gonna end up being online I'm just gonna pop it into the Dropbox as a save point export it there I'm gonna rename it to November sunset pano underscore web because the web version is gonna be way easier at 10 megapixels and I click export. From there, upload it to Instagram and get the likes. All right, take care guys. Peace.